Welcome. This is Joyce Feustel, Boomer Social Media Tutor. I like to start on time, and I'll tell you right now, for those of you who don't know, I'm a Toastmaster. We start our meetings on time, and we end them on time. So if you want to learn about communication and leadership and starting on time, check out Toastmasters. But back to our topic, sharing and schmoozing on LinkedIn. As a social media tutor, I do a lot of work with LinkedIn, and so I get many questions, and that's what led me to create this webinar. And thanks to all of you who are here with us today. What we'll be doing in the webinar is going back and forth between the PowerPoint presentation and LinkedIn itself, where I will demonstrate to you how to do these things I talk about in the PowerPoint. A bit of housekeeping. If you have a question at any point during this webinar, there's a little question pane over to the right-hand side in the little uh, section you see because of being in the GoToWebinar, and that's where you can type in your question, and then we will respond, I should say, I will respond time permitting. I have an assistant here who's helping me with these questions, and this is a good time to tell you it's my first time of doing on my own a webinar. I guessed it on one once, but now here I am, yahoo! So we're going to launch right in now to our material. There are two sections to this webinar. One is sharing on LinkedIn and the other is schmoozing on LinkedIn. So first I'm going to quickly review the sharing topics. Why people don't tend to share, the value of sharing, how to share, what in the heck to even say when you share, what do you do after you share? Did I really post that update or not? You sometimes wonder. And then how you actually can share by drawing from the information that has been shared by your LinkedIn connections. Schmoozing on LinkedIn. And this is a really good time to say that I think of schmoozing in a positive way. I know some people think it's more negative or manipulative, but I thought it was a fun word to use. It rhymes with sharing. And it makes me think about really the way you honestly care about someone in a friendly way and you chat with them. So I'm going over why people don't think to say anything to anybody else personally, um, the value of communicating with people, schmoozing with people, ways you can do it, and what to say when you do that schmoozing. First, let's examine why people don't share. And you might see yourself in one or more of these points here. A lot of people don't even see a value in sharing on LinkedIn. Maybe, second point, they didn't even know they could share. Really, they go? Isn't that just for like your resume on steroids? You can say something, they ask? Yes, indeed, you can. Well, maybe people think they might want to share, but they just don't even know what to say when they share. Or here's a common one I see, it especially with older people who see their younger generation doing a lot of frequent posting on, on their other sites, like maybe Twitter or maybe Facebook. And the nice thing about LinkedIn is that, <clears throat> is that you will be able to share just once in a while, maybe once a week. Actually, a question has come in about the handout, and I just want to say you can get this handout, this PowerPoint, um, after the session. You can even download it now, but I'd advise you just to stay with us and not go off of the webinar looking for that handout in your downloads. It will be there, and I'll mention that again at the end of the session. So those are just some reasons why people don't share. Oops, excuse me, just one second. I need to get back to the proper slide. Now, what's the value of sharing? If there's any one thing I hope you take away from this webinar is that you will see by the things I show you how you can use LinkedIn to build your professional credibility, to demonstrate expertise in your field, to help people know you are the go-to person in what you do for a living. LinkedIn is far better, in my opinion, than any other social sites for this particular purpose. Another cool thing, it keeps you top of mind with your LinkedIn connections. Here's a quick story that goes with this bullet. I was at a Toastmasters International Convention, happened to run into the president of the whole outfit. Now, this is a big deal. This guy he spends a lot of time on Toastmasters. Oh, Joyce, hey, sis, I just love seeing your post on LinkedIn. Well, here's a really busy man with a day job and being president there at Toastmasters, and he's been tracking with me on LinkedIn. Boy, that was pretty sweet when he said that. 
Another value in sharing is that your ranking will go up in internet searches if you are active, if you say things on LinkedIn. Now let's look at how to share. We're going through a couple more slides before we're going to pop over to LinkedIn and look at how this all works in real life. So one of the differences between LinkedIn and Facebook is that you can only share from the home page of LinkedIn. You cannot share from your profile page, which is true with Facebook. So that's how it's different there. And then I'll take you to where you share um, at the top middle part of the page. And updates are typically pretty short. Don't overthink these. Maybe two or three sentences are fine. And then here's one more thing I want to talk about before we go to LinkedIn. What in the heck should you say? I like to put in tips, very quick tips. And even without a picture or anything, I get a fair amount of response to my quick tips. But photos and images are really valuable to add if they will enlighten and expand upon your message and your update. Another thing I will do if I'm going to an event, heck, especially if I'm speaking at it, I'll put in a link to where you sign up for it. You put a link to your meetup, to your Eventbrite, well, one of the reasons we have so many people signed up for this webinar is because I PR'd the heck out of it by putting in the link to register and to post that I put up updates that I put up on LinkedIn. You can have all kinds of other things you put links to. And the thing that's really neat is you can mention other people. Again, I'll use the Facebook or even Twitter analogy with a little at sign. It's a great way to honor them. So think about ways you can do that. Now sit tight here while I'm going to be switching over to, to my LinkedIn. Doo, doo, doo. Here we go. Now you should all be seeing LinkedIn. If there's any problems, just type in a question and let me know. So as I said, we're going to be doing a sharing from the home page of LinkedIn. Now this is a little confusing, frankly, because if you want to write an article, you need to go here. Why they click on, have the word article in this little space, Lord knows. We're going to be talking about updates first. So notice we're going to click in this little part of this larger box, and now we're taken to writing an update. I'll write a short update in real time. Here it is. Many thanks to my video consultant. And watch this. See the at sign? Beth. Klepper, type the name slowly and pretty soon you'll see it there. There she is for, oops, for helping me with this webinar. Yay. So now I've referenced her and, uh, oh, before I post this, notice the default is public. Public is good. We're going to say anything we see on LinkedIn should be consumable by anybody that finds it, right? It's not like Facebook or some other place you want to limit your peeps that are looking at it. If you are a big Twitter user, then you could have public and Twitter. And of course, you'd have to keep it short to tie in with the Twitter section. So that's it. I would not a tag. Really good point. My trusty assistant is bringing up this point. A tag is where you're mentioning somebody. See, see how it's blue here? Because I did this, I'm actually going to back up and do it one more time so you see how I do this. So I want to thank Beth, but if I just typed in her name, she wouldn't be notified that I was bragging her up here. So I'm going to do it one more time. Beth Klepper, there she is. So notice then, as soon as I get far enough into her name, LinkedIn knows who I'm talking about. So I click on this shaded box, and now, you don't want to have a little, like a typo here. Now we have a link. So what will happen is, is when I put post like this, Beth is going to see up in her notifications that I mentioned her, that I mentioned her. So that's what a tag is a process of doing something where you're mentioning somebody else or even you can mention a company page in any sharing that you're doing here on LinkedIn. Now we're going to look at articles. Think about articles. Articles I think are more like blog posts. That's where you have something, a little more substance, probably two, three hundred words, maybe even a thousand words. I've seen them that long. And you could talk about trends in your industry or, or opinion piece you have. I do a lot of how-to pieces because they seem to play well with the people that follow me. You'll need to find a good photo. You click on this little plus sign to go for your photo. And that's, of course, where you go then into wherever you keep your photos. 
not a video, but a photo. So pictures or maybe you have them in documents. That's where you find it. Make sure it's high resolution or LinkedIn just won't like it. It won't, won't uh, publish it. Headline, something catchy, something interesting, get people's attention. And then here is the body of the article. To keep it simple, I would say take it from a Word document and then drop it in here. You can then also have, just like with an update, links to anywhere in cyberspace. You could have photos here within the body of the article, videos, you name it. Up here, you can even link together different articles you've published perhaps in a series here on LinkedIn. Frankly, what I like to do is go take the posts I do on my blog, on my blogging part of my website and just repurpose them a little different headline, different lead and paragraph, and then I put them over on to LinkedIn, which is a good time to go and look at whether I actually published it. See, this doesn't often come up this way. See how we see Beth Gubber right there in the blue? That's how it shows when it posts. Well, sometimes you won't see it right away. It'll just be lost, and I call it the tsunami of this big news feed. So if you don't see it there and you're thinking, well, dang, did I actually do that update? Here's what you do. You can double-click here, or here's the other way you can get to your profile is up here. So now I'm going into my profile to make sure that I actually put that update, and there it is. Many thanks to, oh, my video, Beth Clipper. Oh, I hate that. Do you know what? You cannot, no, they just change this. Ooh, ah, I'm so excited to show you this new feature. Finally, 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 you can edit something on LinkedIn. Oh, I didn't do that on purpose, but it's all divine order, because watch this now, guys. Video, that's so funny. Video consultant, if I could spell. Oh, I always hate to type in front of other people. Consultant. Now, see, I made that clear. Thank goodness. Save. Many thanks to my video consultant, Beth, for helping me with this webinar. Let's go back down here. And see, now it's corrected. Phew. Oh, I was a little worried there. And then if you want to see all of your different activities, things you like, and that's when I was practicing. So maybe I'm like, how many times do I have to thank that, Beth? We can actually delete that little post. Dun -da -da. Oh, that's good. I was kind of worried about that. Now we've just cleaned that up. And then, ooh, this is the other thing I want to show you before one other part of sharing. Would you like to see a completed article? Actually, I'm going to find a better one than the one I just put up because that's hardly got any attention. This has gotten a little more attention because it's from last week, right? So here's, see what I mean, the visual. Here's our visual. And then we go down. Here's the headline. We can see 23 people liked it, five commented, one shared it. Of course, that might have been me resharing it, but that's all right. And then you always make sure to go down and respond to your people. Don't just let a nice comment just sit there unresponded to. So you'll know and see here are these people. Joanne, now I, I can write here. This is great. So I'm just going to type right real time and show you how easy it is to respond. Thanks so much. Now let's see if I can do a little tag again, one more practice. Joanne Devereaux, there she is. And this is where I don't want to have the last name. Back up, watch that, um, for, um, for weighing in. Uh, weighing in on this topic. And I hit reply. So now she has been notified that I responded to her nice comment on my article. So uh, that's just how it is. It's not hard at all to do. So now we've covered articles and there's one more thing I want to show you. Remember I promised you back at the beginning when we're reviewing what you can do with sharing that you could actually share from other people's stuff? Well here's my dear Trisha, client of mine, lives out in California. We have been in touch for I'm sure over a year. So now I'm thinking I've seen consistently good things from Trisha. Let's see what she's got for us today. Mm -hmm. And actually, I'll tell you, I already looked this up because I thought she'd have good stuff. And I found this article. It's a very good article, but I'm going to show you what to do. I think be on the safe side. Go and check that these articles that these people find are really good. Holy cow, look at that. Look at all her likes and comments and, wow, 70-some shares. So I've actually read through this article when I was doing my research, and I know this is really, really worth sharing. So I'm going to go back to this screen. So watch, see how we're doing here? I'm going to like it, 
And then, well, that's going to duplicate it on my newsfeed. I'm just going to share it. That's what I want to do. Now we're kind of like we're writing the update. So thanks so much. Again, the add sign. You get a lot of practice with this, right? Or watching me do it. Um, Trisha, H-O-C-K. There she is. Okay. Um, for, and I want to put her whole name in there, give her PR, uh, for sharing this terrific piece. By, let's see, I don't know if Marie's name will come up or not. Simona, maybe not, because I'm not connected to her. And there's different people. Well, I'm pretty sure that's it is. Why not? I think I'll just take a chance and make the original author know I said her uh, name here. So now I've, look at all I've done here. We found cool material because we, Trisha's got reliable stuff she finds. Good, the lady is acknowledged too that wrote the original piece. I didn't have to do any mental heavy lifting. And here I am schmoozing with my dear Trisha. So that is a perfect segue into the next part of our program, which is going to be schmoozing on LinkedIn. So now we do our little switcheroonie back to the, here we go. Okay, now we're ready to go back into PowerPoint. Da, da, da. Should all be seeing the PowerPoint again. Why don't people schmooze? A lot of times they don't know. Okay, Trisha has a question here. Oh, we're getting to endorsements, Trisha. We're going to handle that. Just want to let you know. Okay. Um, there is something on premium. I'll have to say premium stuff with paid accounts. We really won't have time to get into that. But okay, I'm glad we kind of took a peek at these. So, okay, why don't people schmooze? They don't know what to say. They think they might be pushy. And they don't even know who to schmooze with or where to schmooze. They don't know any of these things. So we're going to help them out. Let's see. Um, we're getting good suggestions on ways that people see what's going on. Value of schmoozing. It helps to reinforce your relationship. Look at how me and Trisha are more connected again because I referenced her uh, or I went and found cool stuff from her and I thanked her for having it. And that builds on our relationship. The other thing I love about LinkedIn is it's such a great place to connect with people after you meet them when you do local, your face-to-face -face networking. I'm not going to go around and friend all these people I meet through business. No, not through Facebook. I feel it's much more appropriate to go into LinkedIn. And then now I'm connected with them. I might not see them again in person for a while, but we stay in touch because I can reach out to them. I can like something they posted or like a work anniversary, things like that. So let's think, well, okay, what is Joyce talking about? Oops, I got ahead here. Here are some ways you can schmooze and things to say. The notifications tab is your best friend when it comes to schmoozing. And this interface we have now with a look of LinkedIn on a computer makes it super easy to find notifications. Write personal notes of congratulations for new jobs, for work anniversaries, birthdays even. I tend to do birthdays on Facebook, but maybe you want to do them on LinkedIn. Write a personal message to someone through LinkedIn. And that's the question Tricia asked about. Endorse people for skills. Write them a recommendation. So let's see how are we going to do all these things. Now we need to make our switch back into, into LinkedIn. So this is where it always takes a second here to get situated. Now we're going to notifications. The notifications, here we are. Got LinkedIn back on. Everybody should see LinkedIn. So the notifications used to be a flag, and now it's a bell, just like it is on your on your mobile um, app, on your phone app, or an iPhone app, or iPad, I mean. So there's notifications. So here are people that are commenting on a post of mine. Now, that's interesting. So I'll go back later, because that looks like that would be fun to read. I don't want to look for that right now. And I'm sorry I got out of the screen by mistake. So we're just going to scroll down. So you just take it and you scroll down till we find something that would be appropriate to communicate. Here's a birthday. Ashley, my beloved Ashley, I've already wished her happy birthday on Facebook. Um, I might do it again just because she's such a dear friend. I'll wish her twice. But that's it. So I would just click into this happy birthday, see like that, and write her some personal note. 
So we'll see a couple other things we could find. Oh, look at this. Somebody has a new position. Oh, look at that's Bruce from my Toastmasters Club. So what I would do when I click into here, and I would have, you know, before I did this clicking, see where he's working, what the job is, just say, wow, Bruce, way to go. I remember when you were interviewing for that job. Now, don't you think that Bruce appreciates that, that I care enough to track with him when he's looking for, um, that he's got, I should say, he landed this new job. So you can do the same thing with work anniversaries, um, any of those kinds of things. So I think you kind of get the idea, Hope, how to do notifications. Now, the thing I promised to tell you about is, oh, messages. Oops, I almost forgot. Messages. There's a couple ways you can do messaging. Let's, again, I'm using my friend Beth as an example. So if I wanted just to write her a message just through LinkedIn, I would find her here, as I did on LinkedIn, and then I would message her, and then I'd write her a message. Now, there could be a handful of you, some of you perhaps, who haven't done any messaging for a long time on LinkedIn. And you're going to see a weird deal here where there's enter and send and three little dots and, you know, contact me if you need some help with that. We can do a quick screen share. But you want to set it up so you're always just using send when you send messages. Otherwise, every time you hit the, the enter key, you're going to be sending your message without wanting to. Ooh, that's so annoying. Now, this is the other thing I want to show you about messages. Say you've been messaging back and forth with someone, and I'll use Jan. We see her right there but we'll just use her as an example because we're going to go to her next anyway. I'm thinking, where is that message chain I have with, with Jan? Oh, now she's at the top. Now we're going to go into the whole stream of things. Again, this is, looks a lot like Facebook Messenger because you're in your set messages and your incoming messages are all in the same place. So that's where that is, and we searched her there. What we're going to do next is do a couple nice things for my dear Jan who I've known, like Trisha, she's a client of mine. I've known her for a couple of years. And I've been thinking, you know, I don't think I've endorsed her for all the things I could endorse her on. Now watch carefully. I should go back to the top. We went into her profile. So we typed in her name. We found her. You're going clicking down almost to the bottom. And here are her, what are called the featured skills and endorsements. This means that based on her background, this is what LinkedIn thinks she's the best at. Or she could actually pick her own top three, just as a whole nother. We'll do that in that other webinar I talked about. See where the check mark is? I've endorsed her, see, for these things. But, oh, how could I have forgotten? Senior Living Community, she ran one of those. So I'm going to endorse her for that. Senior Services. Okay, I think I've done pretty well. I, I don't need to endorse for all those things because I don't know her about her skills. Now think about what I'm doing here. When you endorse for a skill, that means you've seen that person or you're aware that person um, exhibit that skill, has that skill, and it could be over different jobs or volunteer things. But now when you recommend someone, you're going to recommend them for a particular role, particular position. They have to have listed it in LinkedIn. So at any rate, here is Jan. We're going to recommend her. Um, and so we're clicking through on that, and here she is. I want to, now, weirdly, we have to type her name in again. And I'm sorry if you're having trouble with sound. We may be having some connection issues. So I'll just keep plugging away to do the best we can on that. All right, so here's Jan. What's my relationship with Jan? Jan is my client. So Jan is a client of mine. And um, what was my position? All the time I've known her, I've had this, this business. And you know what? I'm going to recommend her for this job she had for quite some time. She's still kind of new with this new one. I'm more familiar with her work as an executive director. So I'm going to say, well, no, I won't actually type it in here. That'd be kind of awkward and embarrass poor Jan if she's on the line here, or on the webinar, I mean. But that's where you type it in. Two or three sentences. Don't think you have to write some big epistle and spend a lot of time with it. Just write two or three sentences. And you might want to personalize it to your um, this note to them and then when you're all done you just go down and click send I'm not going to do it today because I want to really think through this recommendation one thing I would highly suggest you do when you write a recommendation is call that person email them do something out of LinkedIn maybe they don't go on LinkedIn that much so that recommendation will just sit there until that person approves it which is a good thing in fact even if I added a skill that I thought that she was good at she won't even have that skill listed until she, she approves it. Well, we're getting close to wrapping up, 
And I want to just go back now as we're doing this, I'm switching back into my PowerPoint because we have a couple of closing slides here. And um, let's see, there's a ghost helm cursor. Yeah, there's somebody giving me some hints here for this, um, but hang on a second. What's that? Hang on just one minute. We're just checking questions really quickly. Okay. All right. So I want to just do a quick recap of what we have covered today. Um, okay. Okay, here we go. Sorry for that slight delay. Now you should be able to see the PowerPoint again. And what have we talked about? Ways to share, reasons why they don't share, the big value in sharing. Hopefully now you know more about how to share and what to share and how to even know if your share happened, how to share like I did with the um, cool article that Trisha found, and then schmoozing to realize that there's so many different ways to to schmooze. In fact, the why you should even do that, the whole point of it, and how to communicate with people, the different parts of LinkedIn you can use, the notification section, the messaging, the recommendations, and the endorsements, all wonderful ways to stay in touch with people. Now here is where I get a chance to tell you about uh, what's coming up next. So as I said, I'm so inspired by doing this webinar that I Oops, you don't see this one. It's not on there. That's because I added it later. Okay, so I'm just going to tell you about the upcoming webinars. Enhance your LinkedIn profile to attract more clients and referral partners. Does that sound good to you? How about communicate effectively with LinkedIn connections? I think that's what happened. Use targeted searches to find and connect with potential clients and referral partners. They're each going to be $29 or $69 for all three. I do apologize because I just updated my PowerPoint last night, but I realized that this slide didn't get added at the last minute where I thought I was going to have you see that. But you'll be able to get information afterwards, and um, I will have by email. I can send you those three again. Again, basically dealing with the profile, with the endorsements. Oh, I see what's going on. The screen is paused. Do you see it now? Is it on? So I do apologize for this little um, wrap up at the end where we had, so, okay. So let me go back up one more time because again, remember I'm still doing, this is my first shot at this. Here are the webinars. Okay. And that, yeah, I think what happened is I showed this, I added that slide later. So here we go back to wrapping up because we are here at one o'clock and I promised to get done on time. Um, do contact me with any questions. I do apologize for that last goof up around the um, upcoming webinars, but you can always find out about them. Trust me, you'll see my post on LinkedIn when we get to that point when they're ready for you. This whole webinar, words and all, will be available to you, the recording, um, certainly by, I would think, tomorrow. We're going to get the recording set up and I'll have to go through that and get it ready for you. I would really like to get your feedback. Honest to gosh, I would like that. So a survey will come out to you as you're stepping off of this webinar, and again, tomorrow when you have a follow-up email that you'll get from GoToWebinar. So thank you so much for spending this time with us today. I'm thrilled that so many of you stayed all the way through. There you are. I'm so excited. So signing off, this is Joyce Feustel with Bloomer Social Media Tutor, and thanks for spending 30 minutes of your very precious time with me today, and I'm really glad you came to Sharing and Schmoozing on LinkedIn. Okay. I think I'm